Greetings Lord Captains, Alcat Games just released another update on the upcoming DLC Void Shadows, this time giving us some information on the new archetypes. For those who don't know, Void Shadows is the first DLC for Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. It will be out the 24th of September and it will introduce 15 hours of new content, between new quests aboard the Void ship, facing the Gene Stealer cult, new equipment and a new companion, Kibella. She's a new romance, because who doesn't want to romance a death cult assassin? But let's see what they said about the new archetypes. The new first tier archetype is the Blade Dancer. It could develop into Assassin, Master Tactician, Arch Militant and Executioner. Its main characteristics are weapon skill, strength, toughness and agility. Its skills are Athletics, Medicine, Carouse, Awareness and Demolition. This is interesting because we can already see that this is a melee class that will most likely wear light armor, as we suspected from the art. But in which way will it be different from the Assassin? It appears the core of the archetype is its maneuverability. It will gain stacks of death from above while killing enemies, which will allow the Blade Dancer to perform short jumps on the battlefield and to damage enemies in the impact zone. This ability's damage scale with weapon skills and agility. It also has an heroic act called Death Waltz that will enable the Blade Dancer to repeat this pirouette, I imagine the splash damage granted by death from above, multiple times in succession. The more agility the Blade Dancer has, the longer they can continue the dance of death. They can also jump back to the cell where they started their turn with the Acrobatic Artistry ability. They can also perform a blood sacrifice using blood from enemies, allies or their own to perform critical hits. The concept here is that they should use two-handed or dual-wielded swords and they can conceal themselves in a blade shroud, reflecting shots back but overstraining and damaging themselves. So they have been given a defensive ability which comes with a cost. This is a melee archetype built all around maneuverability, scaling with weapon skills and agility. They foresee this archetype will synergize well with the Master Tactician and Arch Militant archetypes. The second new archetype is a second tier one and it's called Executioner. You can enter into it from the first tier Warrior, Operative and Blade Dancer archetypes. Its main characteristics are weapon skill, strength, toughness and intelligence. This last one is an interesting little change from the Blade Dancer. Its skills are Athletics, Medicine, Lore Imperium and Lore Xenos. The core of this class is damage over time. It says they dismantle foes piece by piece deepening laceration and intensifying hemorrhaging as the knowledge of medicine increases, so it scales with the medicine skill. With reckless abandon, executioners share the torment and deal damage over time effects at the cost of their own health, so there's a trade-off here between damage and the character's health pool. Their heroic act Carnival of Misery sets enemies ablaze, poisons them and inflicts bleeding, doubling the damage over time of these effects. With the Gift of Torment ability, they receive bonuses to Armor, Evasion and Deflection, scaling with the number of enemies affected by damage over time effects. Where it hurts is a free action ability that immediately enables the Executioner's next attack, triggering a burst of multiple damage over time procs on the target, ending those effects along with their lives. They imagine this archetype will synergize well with the Biomancer and Pyromancer Psyker Origins. This is all for now. I'm even more curious at this point to try a new run of Rogue Trader with a Pyromancer. Let's see how it performs. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, subscribe. It helps me reach more RPGs and enthusiasts around the world. Regardless, thank you so much for watching, have a great day and see you in the next RPG video.